Welcome back to Tone and Burn UK and today we are doing a versus uh, video on pyrography machines. So there are many types of pyrography machine and you may have started off with something like this one which is um, just a stylus type you can do artistic things with it um, this is sort of the finer uh, equivalent to a single wire i would say uh, on this particular one but the, they're quite basic they don't get that hot so if you're trying to burn onto oak or ash you'll struggle a bit but as a starter model and for something to have a go with they're not bad um you can pick them up very cheaply we're not going to talk about that particular one today but i just wanted to show you so that maybe where you've started and now you think actually i'd like to try something a bit more so we are looking today at the Peter Child's machine. Now this is an old one. All these machines have been used and are in use still. Um, this is actually a borrowed machine. Um, I haven't actually had much experience with using these ones, but they are a temperature controlled machine with a pen. Thank you very much, Andy. And uh, that's that's what it's about. So that's a Peter Child's machine. Um, this one's probably quite an old one now it's still in use it's a good what I call a workshop machine nothing fancy about it you make your own nibs uh, out of wire and uh, yeah away you go a, a favorite amongst wood turners it's um, just a good workhorse so the next one we're looking at, this is the Antex Firewriter. And this was actually my first temperature controlled uh, pen um, machine. And uh, it still goes strong. I still use it. I have two pens for it. And uh, we'll look at that one in a minute. But again, that's another good brand available in the UK. The other ones that uh, we're looking at are the razor tip. Now, we've got three different versions here. Now, this one is the SK, and that's a single pen burner. Again, variable temperature, but you, only, you can only use one pen at a time. And it's basically the same model as this one, which is the SSD10. Uh, this one you can put two pens in and you toggle between the two pens. Uh, one temperature controller and uh, two pens. So if you wanted to, well, I'll show you in a minute, but you can get different pens and nibs to fit. So you can have two different types. And then the one in the middle is the razor tip uh, digital version. And that's the P80 uh, single pen. Um, but this one's quite a clever unit in that you can actually attach different units to it. So that's the three razor tips. Those ones are Canadian. The Antex is UK based, as is Peter Charles, because I think they're now made by Robert Sorby. Is that right, Andy? Yeah, Sorby, Sorby making now. Yeah. So two UK machines and the razor tip. Uh, available worldwide. Okay, for this comparison, I am looking at the P80, which is by Razor Tip. It's being a little flitty fit on me. The Razor Tip SSD10. Now I've put the SK away. As I say, it's exactly the same machine, uh, actually inside as well. The only difference is this is my machine, and I don't want to use the borrowed one. Um, and this one has two pens. The Antex Firewriter, that's also my machine. God, I'm greedy. And this is a Peter Child's, now this is a borrowed machine. I say, the build on the Peter Child, the design hasn't really changed over the years. So although this is quite an old one, um, if you went to a shop today, you would recognize it. It might just be a different color 
but the design concept and the pens etc are exactly the same so that's what I'm going with this one pen wise I'm not too sure what the modern pens are like now um, but these are very basic you've got two connections uh, you just undo with an allen key and say it's a it's a piece of wire basically you should bend your wire then just give it a little tap um, some taps with uh, a hammer just on the end just to temper it and then put it into your machine um, but you do that with all these and you can do the same that's the fi the fire writer and um, say this has got a side an allen key these ones are flat um, flat bladed screwdriver and uh, two connectors shape your shape your your uh, your wire and again with the razor tip uh, this is the b post pen and you can make your nibs but there's also hundreds of nibs that you can buy specifically for the razor tip that will also fit the fire writer um, not too sure i think maybe they'll fit the peter child there may be a slight stretch on them this one, um, this pen, I say, has been used and abused a bit, so the connections are a bit closer, so they may well fit. What's that one like then? Uh, that one's, uh, this one's got screws, the nib's a bit better than that one, we'll swap it out. This looks like it's a slightly newer machine as well. Right. So we're just going to swap that one out. Oh, there we go. So if you if you have a look, if we have a look at that, yeah, there's been a change in colour. So they've gone from a blue to a grey. I think they're now orange. Well, there you go. And Turner's Retreat sell um, Peter Child nibs that are the same type of nibs as the um, Antax and the razor tip, so the, the chisel points and the balls and all the rest of it. So it looks like you can get you can get, get exactly ones. the same nibs for the Peter Child machine as you can for the Antax and the razor tip. Oh well, that's good to know. You can see the it, it, it's been a bit abused, etc. But that's not what we're interested. It will take abuse. By the looks of it, it's still working. It will take abuse so a good workshop one uh, the box itself is just a rectangular box it's got a holder on top and a handle quite like that in fact you've got a handle on there um, it feels solid there's there's a utilitarian feel to it the pens themselves unlike the others which are just a single port it's a, a double port for each pen so these won't go into the other units. So the fire writer, it's uh, a wedge shape. Um, you've got uh, pen ports at the side that your pen just sits into. You can fit two pens on this. They do have an adapter. It's uh, another connector that goes from a single to a block with a switch on it and ah, there we are so yeah you take this one out put that in and then one pen I think I have got another pen somewhere so they a that gives you a slightly longer reach and then you just put the pens in there and then you've got two pens, two holders on each side but you can't use the pens together, they won't be um, heating up together you have to toggle between them that's the same with the, but that's uh... the same with the razor tip so a lot of people think you have two pens then you can use them together, you can't you have to toggle between them. Okay, so that's the fire writer. So in that aspect, 
You can have two pens set up. You could have a different nib in each one. Um, you can, well, it now feels like that you can get nibs for all of these as well as making your own. Overall though, Peter Childs will only hold one pen, pen at a time. The Antex, you can swap between one or two, but you would need to buy this separate uh, unit. Razor tip, I say, we've put the single burner away. The SK has a single pen. We're using the SSD 10 today. Two pens, you have to toggle between. Single input to the pens, whereas the Peter Childs, double input. Can you swap these pens out? These are slightly um, thinner. Let me just get that fire right pen again. I'll show you the difference. So if you've got quite large hands, you might find that the fire writer is a good pen for you. Um, it's a chunkier one. The only thing is that they do get a little bit warm. There's, uh, there's no collar on it. This has got a, a, sorry, a kind of a heat protection collar and they do do these in different thicknesses as well. So you've got big hands and you want something more to hold on to, they, um, they do supply them. But yeah, that's a bigger pen, it's a nice slender one. This doesn't get as hot, it's got vents in it. And they have actually just done a, a design change so that the ceramic collar here uh, is slightly more pronounced. It's in the pen there, whereas that one is outside. And they have changed the vent slightly on the actual pens. But, and if you compare the Peter Child, it's sort of in between the two. So that's why I say go in and feel the pen, see what's comfortable for you. If you're burning for a long time, you want comfort. Double pen, double pen. I say the P80 is out on its own because you can connect units and it's a magnetised unit. I still don't think you can use the pens together, so it, you could have one set up on a different temperature, one unit set on a different temperature, and you toggle again between. But it's, uh, it's quite an expensive uh, unit to buy that second unit. And uh, price-wise, these ones are all roughly the same price. We'll put the prices in afterwards. Yeah, we'll put the prices in afterwards. We'll check to see what the latest prices are on them. And we'll put those in the description. Let's see how they burn. So first off, let's go for the Peter Charles. What do we recommend? Shall we set these at about the same temperature? Yeah, put them at the same. So if I, and normally I burn on about seven on uh, the fire writer and the razor tip on this. Is this spalted order? Uh, it is spalted order. It is spalted order, right. So, the first thing I notice is I don't like to have my nibs glowing. That tells me that's a hot burn. We're not trying to melt metal. We are trying to scorch wood. So I'm gonna turn that down again because that will just be too hot, I think. So, just knocking it back so that's at a, just over six so it's still going to be hot I'm just going to blow on it just take some of the heat out and let's see how we do so the cable this one is uh, they're all double k double wired um, it's quite a stiff wire a bit like the Antex
little bit of fun blobbing. Now that could be because I'm not used to the pen yet. The um, when you're burning on wood, when you're doing pyrography, the wood is pulling the heat from the pen, and you have this um, moment where the heat has got to get back into the pen. So the machine's always playing catch up. And what I think is that the um, so the heat transference, if you like the the speed in which that heat is getting back into the nib, I think it's quite slow. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. As long as you keep that in mind, you've just got to go really, really slow. But I am getting a bit of blobbing. Which I don't normally get on... Just speed through. Now the pen's not heating up. It's that's nice and cool to touch. Comfortable to hold. It's comfortable to hold. I've got quite small hands, so um, if the pen is too too big, it gets uncomfortable. I personally find the razor tip pens a bit more comfortable than the Antax. That's what I say, it's always good to just try these things out. Usually Yandles have got the suppliers of most of the pens, most of the machines there at their show. It's a great opportunity to try out the different yeah. machines. We did not But they have got a good display now. Now I know that razor tip is being um, stopped by other UK suppliers. Um, I can't remember who they are, but again, I'll try and put the details. Now you see, normally I can get nice smooth whiskers. So, yeah, that's interesting. I think that for drawing, let's have a look and see. Do you want to just put Peter and yeah, PC at the top? PC underneath there. So we know which is which. It's okay for writing. <laughs> right, shall we just do a little bit of texture on the oak because normally wood turners want to. Yeah, wood turners are interested in creating texture they as want part texture. of their. Yeah. So I'm just going to draw a quick box. Ooh. Grain on the oak is far more open than the older. Yeah, you will always fight it. So I'd say if you were trying to do shading, then even any anyone, um, oak is not your friend. Right, let's do some dots. So I haven't changed the heat setting, I'm doing it all the same. Now it's fine for this, it's got enough recovery, heat recovery time. And I can now see why wood turners like this. It's just a good little workhorse, good workshop workhorse and you can you can see the smoke coming off there. Normally I've got 
extraction, extraction and a mask on um, but due to us doing filming in a different workshop and I forgot my mask it's a bit blue that's okay but bring it up in a minute let's just do some wiggles Wood burners, uh, wood turners as well. I notice always have the machines turned up so that the nibs are glowing. Because the hotter you have it, the more glowing you have it, the more chance that you're going to damage your nib. Some mum say, "Oh, I've had my nib in there for years." Yeah, shall we have a look at that nib? That... You can see the carbon build up on the. Yeah. Now doing this, you have to do it quite slowly at this temperature. Probably, if I put the temperature up, yeah, you're going to shorten the life of your nib. But I may stop doing a bad job. We've got texture in there. It's fine. It's great. Great little, great little machine. I would say more of a wood turner's machine than somebody who is looking to do art with it. So that's a bit blobby, even you know, even for me. Right, next up. So we have that's pen number one. See, that's my nib, still in shape. That hasn't been glowing. <laughs> so we're gonna put this down to six. So that's a six setting on there. That was a six setting on the Peter Childs. Let's see what happens. I'd say a six setting on the fire writer. Now, interestingly enough, actually, I'm just going to take that pen out of the splitter because I do know that the splitter box drops the temperature a little bit. So I'm just going to take that out. Don't run away with it, though, Ant, because I need it for us to show something in a minute. Now, what I do notice with my fire writer I like the Peter Childs where these connections do up on the side. This one just does up on one side. And what I notice is if I don't have the pen the right way, and sometimes you pick it up and you go to do a quick burn, you might have it upside down. There's heat in there and you might just posh it onto the, the wood. So you have to kind of make sure that your connectors are at the top. And say so it's a thicker pen. And there we go, a bit more heat in that nib now, that's better. And go a little bit faster. You're not getting the blooming either. I'm not getting the blooming and it's relatively a smooth burn. And the reason for that is that the heat is coming back to that nib that bit quicker. That's the fire writer and the Peter Charles. And I think, I hope you can see that that looks a little smoother. So it's still using a wire tip, but because there's a more consistent um, release of heat to the nib, it's, it gives you a smoother burn. Actually, that there is a, a, is a mark on the timber and not a burn blemish. Yeah, yeah there's an, another one there and there. There's some up here. But actual you know when you compare the backs 
and around the ears there. That's a lot smoother. So let's have a look and see what it does with texture. See, I'm not pressing hard, I'm just letting it burn into the wood. Same pressure as you'd use for writing with a normal biro. A lot of people think you have to stab into it and you don't. Now what I do find is I've got quite small hands and I find the, the pen after a while is a little awkward. It, it kind of gives me cramp in my hand. So I do, if I'm burning for any length of time, I do do a little bit of hand exercises with this one. It's not a bad thing, it's your moving hand. But I'd say it's I'd say it's a pen for a man. Or if you know, if you've got large hands. Put the RT. I will put because it's the Antex Firewriter, I'll put FW underneath. And texture wise, it's nice, you can feel it, you can feel the texture. Um, you can probably go a bit quicker with that one because it's re-releasing heat to the, to the tip quicker. So, you know, you, you don't have to be quite so laboured with that one. Actually, interestingly enough, when we do outside demonstrations, we um, tend to take this one with us because we have a leisure battery and a inverter. inverter. <laughs> and so I can burn outside with this one. I, our inverter can't cope with the power um, that the razor tip takes. So this is my go-to one. If I want to set up outside, I go to the fire writer. I don't know about the uh, Peter Charles. Never used it outside. Never, never used it outside. Really we'd, have to, we'd have to look at the power output on that one. So that's quite interesting. So yes, so that's that's the the fire writer. Now then, turn it on first. Um, the razor tip, say, comes with different different pens. So they have one that's got what they call the BP post. So they have changed the design. Um, this is a newer pen and this has got a fixed nib in it. They do a whole range of these. There's a big catalogue. They've got about 200 different nibs. And the latest BP has this white ceramic coming up outside now, um, whereas before it's a smaller ceramic inside. So you'll notice that the uh, connecting screws are on the side as they are on the Peter Childs with the razor tip, not on the top. So you haven't got that issue of having your pen the wrong way around. So that's the first thing. Uh, the other thing is that the pens come in well, the, the nibs, some of them take more power, need more power. So they have um, two types of wire. They have a heavier duty one for the bigger pens. Um, and then the, the lower one. And they're marked with a, a red connector. I'm going to use this one. So because I'm using a wire, it's on the BP, which is the heavier duty. So I've got heavy duty wire. I'm on there, so let's go. Let's go back to the hair. Now this is actually a preformed wire, but it's the same thickness as the fire writer.
Now I'd say that number six on the razor tip is not as hot. So I'm going to turn that up a little bit, just about six and a half, just to see if that makes a difference. It's burning and it is consistent. You only really get a consistent line as well if the heat has been transferred back to the nib. Also your technique helps. So you've got to go slow enough, smoothly enough for heat transfer back. But what I would say is that maybe the razor tip is more controllable, that there's not such a jump in temperature, in temperature between the numbers. We call that the Raz D10. You've got a nice clean burn there, though, haven't you? Yeah, it's a clean burn. Um, there's definitely no bleed through. There's no blobbing. So this one will be the Raz P80. Now this is going to be interesting because, as we'll see in a minute, I've got nothing to equate temperature wise. temperature wise. So if 100 is the minimum and 800 is the maximum, we need the midline and then go up. Let's go. Ooh. Now that's really interesting. So even drawing the box, you can see that that is nowhere near going to be hot enough to add texture at number six. So to get an equivalent burn, what are we going to have to go to? Seven. Well, let's try seven and then. So let's do seven. So you wouldn't be able to draw lines. You can get texture. If, if I was just doing a, kind of a gnarly texture, I'd really have to whack that heat up. So that is interesting. I would say that maybe the razor tip D10 is not the best one if you're trying to put a texture on one of the really hardwoods like ash, sweet chestnut, oak unless you're prepared to really put the temperature up and and clean your nib off because that sweet chestnut that sweet chestnut i better not do that it's got somebody's thing on it but you can see it's a similar grain to the oak oh you, you do the like side of the heart will be all right Yeah, it's 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 hard one, but you need less temperature on there. And take that pen off because I am going to use it on this one. That gives you a, a size difference between the uh, lighter use pens and the heavy duty. You see the size difference that's on the, on the uh, razor tips. So. so we've worked out that number six equivalent on the P80. P80 um, works in 
different way. 80, 480. 480, is that right? So we just dial in the temperature. Start that heat up a little bit. The D10 gave a nice consistent burn for drawing on smoother wood. Uh, not as hot, so you don't get the uh, bleeding or bloom on the burn, um, but it is smooth. It's a clean burn. It's isn't a it? clean burn. So if you're doing art of any form or you want a nice clean pattern, that's good. It's controllable. Um, however, let's have a look at the. You can see there that I mean I put that temperature right up and then in the end it was on number nine to do the lower half um, and it was kind of struggling on the oak which I thought was quite interesting texture wise again you can feel it but you should be able to feel it you're adding a texture but yeah a, a little uh, little surprised at how that struggled really compared to the other two and immediately you can see that, that is more a comparison of the firewriter and the peter childs at that halfway or just over halfway temperature i've done a bit of a wiggle there that was me and not the machine. This line here is actually spalting, these dark lines. So take no notes of those. The one thing about spalted wood is you get softer areas and harder areas. smooth burn, a deeper burn than the D10 and I'd say comparable with the Antex, there's a little bit more bloom with the Antex and then a lot smoother than the Peter Child. That's quite, um, quite interesting. We'll put a still up in a minute. Yeah. Still up doing square, so immediately you can see a difference. You barely see the burn of the box with the D10. So, whereas, although this is still struggling, and ordinarily I would probably Turn the temperature up and let's just see how it gets on with doing the texture. So remembering this is actually the same pen that we used this time. So it's just the machine that's different. But that's okay, that's, that's coping. It's the only machine that you can actually tell the temperature the nib is. <laughs> So yes, that's not, um, I'd say the razor tip for artist texture on oak 
is you can you can feel that's the deepest and that in my mind would be why Peter Childs is so popular with the woodturners and why they're such a workhorse um, I think for for a wood turner or a carver who wants texture and they're using oak yeah your Peter Childs would be the one to go for um, the fire writer is comparable that's that's a good burn it was consistent I'd say the razor tip yeah, you, if you're wanting to burn at higher temperature um, then that's the one to go for but it may struggle may struggle with your uh, with your oaks and your ashes but if you want to do artistry and you want consistent nice lines um, I think you can't go wrong with the razor tips the fire writer is okay you may need to turn the temperature down I think it burns better but I probably wouldn't go for the Peter Childs. It'd be worth trying their new nibs though, wouldn't it? It would be worth trying their new nibs. Um, another question I get asked a lot is, can you put the razor tip pens on the fire writer? Now, I must admit, when razor tip first came out, I did a, a, a demonstration evening at Yandel's and we got all of the machines out and it was asked at that event and I very quickly tried to connect the pen to the fire writer and I went, no, it doesn't look like it works. However, I was trying with the uh, lower grade wire that razor tip do. I then heard from somebody and they said you can connect them, but you need to do use the connection box and it will work. Now this experiment I'm just trying with the heavy duty wire and I'm going to insert that into it does insert because I just did it there we go so that's inserted fine they're the same connectors there we go so the same connection now let's bring that into shot just putting that onto six yep and that's the pen that I've just connected. Actually, let's just pop the wire on. So this is the same pen that we've been using. Let's just see. Is starting to glow red and I think that shows that the, the fire text runs hotter is burning hotter at number six than the equivalent on the SSD 10 but it does show that it works so that's quite interesting so you can use the razor tip pens on the Antex. But the Antex Firewriter pen wasn't glowing red at six, was it? It wasn't glowing red. Which is really interesting. It suggests that the heat transfer from the razor tip pens is a lot more efficient oh, yeah. than the heat transfer in the Antex, which is why the machine has to kick more power out. Yep. So there you go. So that answers that question. Me using the machines differently to Andy and doing hours of burning at a time, I would probably go razor tip. However, if I'm burning outside, I'd go fire writer and use the razor tip pens. So I don't know what that is, what conclusion you draw from that. But I say they're all good machines, they all have their uses and it will really be 
dependent on your budget and dependent on what you're doing with it. So hopefully you've gained something from those comparisons and I've showed you, you know, it's been a good test. So uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.